ability to add special effects to your photos is one of the most enjoyable features of Photoshop. With a few clicks of the mouse, you can transform an ordinary family photo into a work of art. Photoshop CS6 can simulate all sorts of artistic techniques, including oil painting, charcoal sketching, and watercoloring. You can also blur images and emboss them, distort and stylize them, and much, much more. Now the special effects in Photoshop CS6 are called filters, and that's not a bad way to think of them. It's sort of like seeing your images through a special lens. Think of those mirrors in the funhouse at the carnival. Photoshop CS6 even has a few filters that can simulate those magic mirrors. Like in this example here, I've applied a filter to the photo that almost makes it look as though the picture were printed on silly putty instead of paper. So take a moment to find the filter button up in the Photoshop options menu bar and click on that and it looks like this. You can see you have a lot of options to choose from here. And if you hover over each category, you can see that there are different options available in each. So take a moment to go through those and see what options are available to you. So as an example, if I wanted to stylize this photo, I could choose an effect. For example, the wind effect. It gives me a preview of what that will look like. I click OK, and you can see that our filter has been applied. Now while some filters will simply take effect as soon as you select them, others may have options that allow you to fine tune the final look. For example, if we go back to that wind filter, We can change the method, we can change the direction, and there are different options that we can choose to get the look that we want. You can see that looks a lot different from how we had it before. However, some of these features have even more options to them, and if that's the case, something called the filter gallery will open. To access the filter gallery, you can click on it right here. And this is a great way to search for and apply effects to your images because it gives you the chance to see what your image will look like with the effect you actually apply to it. So you can use the hand tool here to move it around. Right now we have a crosshatch effect selected. And you can see more of the options that I talked about. You can adjust the stroke length, you can adjust the sharpness of the crosshatches, the strength if you want a more vibrant effect. And when you look here under brush strokes, you have all sorts of different options to choose from. And you can see that it gives you a preview of each one as you click on it. And if you want to see more or less of your image, you can adjust your zoom 100%, gives you the full size of the image. If you want to see more, you can bring it way down. So play around with that and get it to an area that you're comfortable working with while you see your preview. So as an example, let's select an artistic effect. You can see I clicked on artistic and that opens the menu of options. And I'm going to choose underpainting. As you can see, we have a lot of options that will let us fine tune the look of our photograph. Some other filters may have a few different options, but the concept is basically the same for all of them. In this particular instance, we have the ability to change the brush size, the texture coverage, the texture type, the scaling, the relief, and the direction of the light. So in this case, I'd like to select a different texture, so I'm going to choose sandstone. You can see that gives it a little bit of a rougher look. If I zoom in, you can see that even better. And changing any of these options can significantly impact the final look for your photograph. So make sure you experiment with the different settings to see what you like. In fact, if you want to, you can take this opportunity to test the process out for yourself. You can launch CS6, load your favorite picture, and try using the different filters. Try all the different options at different settings and see what they look like. But do make sure that you don't overwrite your original image. In fact, when you open up your picture, you may want to save it as a new file name right away so that you don't accidentally overwrite your original. Now one of the problems with using ordinary filters to alter the image is that once you've applied it, you can't go back later and edit the settings. The pixels of the image itself have been irrevocably altered. This is what's known as destructive editing. You can still go back and use the undo button on a recently applied filter, but if that undo option is no longer available, 
it can sometimes be a hassle to no longer have the ability to edit those filters. And that's another reason why it's a good idea to work on a copy of an image rather than the original. But fortunately, to address this issue, Photoshop came up with the idea of smart filters. They make it possible to go back at any time and change the settings of any filter. And what's more, you can stack them just like layers, make them opaque, or use them as masks to add an effect to just one area of an image. So to create a smart filter, you must first convert the image into a smart object. So you'll go up to Filter and then Convert for Smart Filters. It will ask you if that's what you want, and in this case that is what we want, so we can click OK. And the object has been converted. And you can see that the way the layer looks has changed. This extra box has been added, and that tells you that this object has been converted into a smart filter. And now you can add a filter just like you would under ordinary circumstances. So we're going to go up to our filter gallery. We'll select another artistic filter, and I'm going to select paint daubs. I'm going to change my brush size to 22 and give it a sharpness of 30. And from the brush type, I'd like to select Sparkle. And you can see our previews here. I'll click OK. Now looking at the Layers palette, you can see that our Smart Filter appears just under our image in the hierarchy with the type of filter right under it. And if you were to add another filter, it would appear above the first and so on. The layers can now be moved, deleted, or hidden just like an ordinary layer. To adjust any aspect of your filter, you can now just double click. And that will once again launch the filter gallery menu and you can experiment to your satisfaction and edit the content at any time. So now let's talk about creating text effects. You learned how to create and edit text in Lesson 6. We're now going to discuss how you can add effects to your text. You can warp it, wrap it around objects, add drop shadows, and more. So first, let's talk about warping text. There are a number of ways to warp text. You can make it follow an arc, twist it, make it bulge, inflate it, and more. To warp text, select a text layer and click the Warp button in the Options bar, which looks like this. To warp text, select your text layer and then click the Warp button in the Options bar. The Warp Text dialog will open, and you can select a style from the drop-down menu. And if you need to, if you'd like to preview it, you can move your dialog window to see what the different effects do. And by default, none is usually selected. And I'd like to select Fish. The effect is automatically applied, and you can now manipulate the look of the text by adjusting the bend, horizontal distortion, and so forth. And once you're satisfied with the results, click OK, and there you have it. Now you can remove the warp at any time by selecting the type layer that has the warp text, click on the warp text button again, and select none, and that will go back to normal. So just take a moment to go through the warp text style options and familiarize yourself with them. Try applying them to text and adjusting the available options. This will give you a good understanding of the text warping capabilities of Photoshop CS6. So now let's talk about typing text on a path. We learned about creating complex paths with the pen tool in Lesson 11. And as we know, we can also create paths using the different shape tools that Photoshop has. Now we can learn how to make text follow these paths. For example, if we wanted our text to follow a circular shape, we can drag to create that circle. And now we can make our text follow it. Click on the text tool, and then hover until you see the cursor change into the squiggly line here. Click and then begin typing. You can see that our text appears and it follows that path. Now also note, now also keep in mind that text typed along a path can be oriented either horizontally or vertically. We've selected horizontal in our example. Vertical text will appear parallel to the path while horizontal text appears perpendicular to it. So to switch between the two, just go over here 
and you can select horizontal type tool or vertical type tool. And if you want to move the text, you can do this by moving the entire path. Or to change the shape of the text, you'd simply move and drag the anchor points to a different position. And you can see that our text adjusts itself and moves as we move our anchor points. Now let's talk about some of the other text effects that we can apply. Text is basically just another object in Photoshop CS6, so it can be treated just like any other object. It can be used as a mask, it can be moved, colored, manipulated, and so forth. However, applying a gradient to your text isn't quite as easy as using the gradient tool in the toolbar. But fortunately, it's still pretty simple. So click the type tool and type in your text. Make sure that you have your new layer with the text on it selected. And now duplicate that layer by right clicking on the layer in the layers panel and selecting duplicate layer. Click OK. And you'll see that it gives it the same name by default and adds copy at the end. You can leave that or change it as you see fit. Now with your new layer selected, right click on that and select rasterize type. Rasterizing is simply the process of converting a vector image to a bitmapped image. Now right click on it again and select blending options. This launches the layer style dialog box. From here, you can add drop shadows, inner shadows, outer glow, and so forth. So feel free to come back to this and experiment and become familiar with the various options and how they appear on the page. But for our example, we just want to add a gradient. So we're going to select a gradient overlay from the menu bar. Now if you have the preview box checked, the options you select will automatically show on the text here, and you may need to move your box to be able to see that. You can select any combination of styles to apply to your text. So in our example, in addition to the gradients we've selected, I'd like to add some stroke styles as well. I can see how that looks there and adjust it as I want. Once you have that done, go ahead and click OK. And then take a look at the layers panel over here. You see our text with the effects that we've added, which have now been applied. And you can see that this acts identically to the smart filters we learned about earlier. You can double click on any of the sublayers associated with the effects to change the values and alter the appearance of your text. So for example, if I wanted a smaller stroke size, I can change that in the and there you have it.